everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. Today we are making a headband. Well, in fact, a couple of weeks ago I made this scrappy scarf and I love wearing it, but when I get out, yeah, I wanted something on my head. So I thought, what if I make a little scrappy headband? It would go with the scarf and also it would go with anything that I was wearing because just like this scarf that goes with anything that you're wearing because it's so wild in colours. Now I have made quite a few headbands over the course of this channel, you know, there's quite a few videos of a headband but I find I don't wear them because they never go with my outfit. <laughs> so Yep, another headband with another idea. So what do you need? So this is the example of the scarf. So I'm going to put that aside for inspiration. And this time I'm going to build my headband on a headband that I have. Now, I particularly do like this headband, although it's not crocheted, because of the colour. I like the colour, but it doesn't go with anything. But also it's nice and thick and it's like that flea, so it's really warm. And I have to admit, making a crochet headband, it's all well and good. But, you know, there are holes and the wind does come through. So I have been wearing the headbands that I've been making over the in all those other videos with this one underneath and that makes it so much nicer to wear. So I am now finally decided on the design of the headband that I'm going to turn this into so I can wear it with anything. Yes, I have made little squares, random colours from that same pool as I did this scarf. And yeah, I've made six so I'm hoping that that will be enough to go round the headband. And here I have that same raspberry that I used for the scrappy scarf. And I am going to use it here as well to crochet the squares together. I will be using my three and a half, so my normal hook size for this yarn. Uh, it is prescribed for a four, but I always use a three and a half because, of course, I wanted as many squares as possible and I want them as small as possible so it would fit onto my headband. So I'm thinking if I do another row of double crochets in the raspberry then that will make it just so that i will need hopefully just the six granny squares to go around the headband of course you'll need your scissors and darning needle because there'll be ends to sew in but also i have here a needle and a thread because i am going to attach it permanently to the headband this time so although i have been wearing it underneath all my other ones I just want to make sure that this one now is secure and I really want to start using it and start wearing it. I am not going to show you how to do the square because it's a normal standard granny square. I did that in the previous video so I will link it here for those who want to learn how to make a granny square and I am going to start crocheting it together. So here I did double crochets and I did like a pull through attachment so that's what I'm going to do here as well. So let's get started on crocheting these together. Now I've put them in this order and although it's all random, um, I just didn't want to, the, the two greens to be together, you know, something like that. Uh, so the way we're going to put them together is the following. So I'm going to get started on here like this, crochet there, down, up, down and up, down and up like this all along all the squares and then you come back in one long go there and then here we will see what we have to do to make sure that it's the right size for the headband okay so 
let's get going make a slip knot insert your hook and we are going to get started with a standing stitch so you yarn over and you insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two so that's our first standing double crochet and we are going to get started by doing half a corner and then of course you do two more double crochets and then we start placing our double crochets in every stitch along the side and when you get to the corner you will be doing a corner of three double crochets two chains and three double crochets two chains and another lot of three double crochets go that's the first side done and now we continue along the second side and we do the corner there And two chains and then the second lot and then the third side on this first square then when you get to the corner there you're going to do a half a corner so that means three double crochets and a chain. So now we're here. So now we're going to get started on this square while we loop into the previous square. So you take up your square, ready to get going. And you yarn over and you start doing exactly the same as what we just did. On the first square but you're going to every time you have finished your double crochet you're going to pull up a loop here you're skipping this chain go under the V of the corresponding double crochet on the other square put your loop back around your hook pull it closed and pull it through then you do your next double crochet Again, pull up a loop underneath the V and you pull it through. There you go. And so each time you find the V of the corresponding stitch while you are actually doing the double crochet around around your square but of course not completely just the three sides and as usual it makes that lovely little ridge and it adds um you know to our crocheted volume you know to the size of the squares that we have made so this will now hopefully cover the whole of the headband and then when you do the corner you do the three double crochets of the corner then you do a chain and then you do exactly the same you go into the chain space pull through the loop do a little chain again and then off you go doing the next side and 
there we go so we've now attached these two here i shall attach all the other ones in the same way and then i will be back when i am here to do the last long row So I finished going in between the squares and attaching them together and then here I thought oh let's just keep going and I was about to start here when I checked it. So I took my headband and I laid it against there like I'm planning on sewing it onto there and in fact it meets up. So. The original plan was to just come back and then here, then do the, you know, do maybe another row and then attach or do a slip stitch, whatever I needed to do to attach it. But I think actually if I attach it now, it's going to be wide enough for the headband. So I think that would be perfect. So like I said, make sure you check it before you do anything else so that you can in fact do the adhering here or if this is too wide like this obviously you can't get a square in there um you just have to do a few more rows or whatever you need to do to get that closed up but i would do that in this raspberry color so that in fact it doesn't you know, it's not too obvious that you've done that. So yes, so um, this is quite a straightforward headband that I got from Mountain Warehouse. Very inexpensive. Six little granny squares of one, two, three rows. And then, of course, the last row where you adhere it. There we go. So I have just undone that last bit because I think it would be better if I actually attached it straight away now. So we're going to do that. And that's of course the same system as before, looping through every V, there we go. And of course you don't need the actual headband there. Um, the thing is, you see, I live near the sea and when we do go for a walk, it is quite windy. When there is wind, it there is wind, right? Um, and I have to say, a crocheted headband just does not provide me with enough cover from the wind. So that's why I have been wearing that um, this fleece cover under it. Um, it would also work if you just put a lining in it, um, you know, if you have that sort of cranberry uh, colour. I always keep on calling this cranberry in my head. Uh, but yeah, this kind of colour lining would, of course, work really well as well. Or even if you have one of those sort of teddy bear lining, you know, that sort of really nice and warm fabric that would work as well. Or any fabric, to be honest. So when you get to the corner, I'm going to do as many as I can here, looping through. But of course, I do not have a chain space to work with. So I am just going to do the chain space on this side and then do the looping through from the other side when I am there. So can I get into that one? There we go. That's in. Yep, there that's come out again so now i'm doing my two chains and then i continue with my corner 
there we go so when i get back here i will finish it there and in fact i'm going to be continuing all along my headband and then here there is a little chain here that's where i will be doing the little slip stitch in between the two chains so i will get there in a moment and i will show you So I'm at the corner here, I do my little chain, then I go into there and I do a slip stitch, a chain and off I go doing my side again. I will meet you when we reach that beginning here. So I'm just doing that last double crochet from the corner, chain one, and now I'm just going to go into the chain space and do a slip stitch. And that will be okay. So there we go. And yes, like I said, it just worked out that that was the length of my headband. If it doesn't for you, you'll just have to, you know, try and use this last bit here to adjust either way, either smaller or larger or a slip stitch or, you know, whatever you need to do to get the width that you need. So, yeah. Let me just put this in here. Look, it's perfect. Just fits nicely. And so now I am going to use a needle and a thread. I've chosen this sort of uh, grey thread because I think it will be okay to use. It will be easy for me to see. I don't know how well you're going to see. But it will sort of also disappear, I hope, into the colours of the yarn. So I'm going to work with double strand. I always like to do that. Make a knot. There we go. Not that that will stop it though. Oh yes, it might do because I'm actually going to, um, you know, be sewing it onto my headband here. So I just need to make sure of course, I don't need to because my crocheted headband is the same everywhere. Now, if you have got one side where you've had to make an alteration, then I suggest you make sure that that's at the base of your headband so that it's at the back where you usually wear it. And of course, I am just going to get started carefully by putting in my thread here, coming out the other side. And I'm just going to use small stitches and just stretching it over the edge of my headband. And I'm not really going to, can you see what I'm trying to do? I'm going to be sort of going into the stitches, into the yarn, but not towards the front. And I'm also going to try and look bring it sort of to the edge of my headband there. Well, this is a little bit fluffy, never mind. So into the stitches and then to the edge of the headband. And of course, when you're doing this on the other side, you can stretch it a little bit more so that it nicely covers. Look, see, that's nicely together here. So this is how I am going to do my whole headband just peeling it back picking up something but not really going through the whole stitch and then going back to your headband on the edge to make sure that you secure it there so picking up something going back picking up something and going back there we go And yeah, this is the finish. So take your time to do this nicely. And that way you will see a minimum amount of your liner headband, but you will see a maximum amount of your 
nice crocheted headband. So I will see you when I have finished this and I'm sure I'll be going on a walk. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this idea of making a matching headband to go with the scarf, but also one that you can wear with any outfit that you have. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.